Howdy, howdy. Hey everyone, Alan here. I'm at my lovely parents' home in, in Bethesda, Maryland. You look at this lovely view. This is the house that I well, kind of grew up in. I was born in Ohio and then I moved to Maryland when I was 13 in uh, eighth grade um, and went to high school, uh, middle school, high school, and then college in Maryland before moving to New York for my first job. And then when I started my first business in 2012, uh, started doing the digital nomad thing, moved to South America and then Asia for six years before moving back to the US this September. Um, so I've been based back in LA for the last few months and then uh, for Thanksgiving, for the holidays, uh, my parents and I met my sister and her, uh, hus uh, her husband, my brother-in-law. Um, they live in Detroit. So my, si my parents and I uh, moved, or moved uh, went to Detroit to visit them for about a week. And then uh, I was originally supposed to fly back to LA from Detroit, but I, I figured, eh, I got, I got the, the time. I can, I can drive back to, I changed my flight to fly back from Maryland instead. And I drove back to Maryland with my parents and I'm spending a week in town here, checking in with all the Maryland crew, the hometown crew, my friends in the DC area. Um, and then I'm flying back to LA on Sunday. Uh, so been, it's been a great holiday. I uh, hope you guys have had a great holiday as well. Um, really looking forward to actually tomorrow night. So my, my roommates from college uh, started a band called Pigeons Playing Ping Pong. Super fun, high energy, psychedelic funk. They've been extremely successful since college. It's been probably 10, 11, 12 years now they're doing I think over 150 shows a year, they're playing venues like Red Rocks. Tonight, they're playing the 930 Club, the venue we grew up going to, and then they're headlining the Anthem, one of the biggest concert venues in DC tomorrow. So they're doing extremely well for themselves. And I'm going with a group of friends, a group of my high school friends, uh, just, to, uh, just, just, just to have a great time. So super, uh, super excited, looking forward to that. And then back to LA on Sunday. Um, which I'm also excited to get back to the routine. This has been a really nice pattern interrupt, you know, kind of changing things up a little bit. Um, but, it, and then it's always good to, to go from that to back in the routine, which would be great. Um, and uh, so yeah, it, it, this video, I wanted to share an idea that I've been kind of ruminating on recently. And don't be surprised if you see this in a blog post coming up soon. It's definitely something I wanna flesh out more thoroughly, but it's this idea that um, there is I'm going, to call, I'm going to call it, I think, the Asian egregion spectrum. And egregion is like if you feel like an aggrievance, like, like you feel wronged. Like if someone like hits your car and then drives away, or if someone, you know, throws an egg at your front door, like you're, like, you're, you're you feel this grievances and you feel it's, it's egregious that they did this to you. So you feel uh, a grievance, you know, a grievance. You feel this anger, you feel vitriol, um, you feel hate or something or pissed um, and the Asian egregion spectrum and and I've noticed um, in so firstly the context over the last like year year and a half there have been a, like a, this this mass waking up of, of Asian youth Asian culture on social media and online communities which has been amazing to see like Facebook groups like subtle Asian traits and the uh, um, this Facebook group called subtle Asian traits started and then it grew to like a million global members over a million now and and it's people sharing memes about Asian culture and joking about, you know, uh, it's like it's like uh, Asian humor and self-deprecation and a lot of like just funny things, you know, talking about our culture and parenting. And that spurned this movement, spawned this movement rather of like subtle Asian X, like subtle Asian fitness, subtle Asian networking, subtle Asian dating, subtle Asian ravers, and all of these groups just like get really big really fast. And it's all these Asians of Asian interest groups, interest groups of Asians, and uh, and people talking. And, and sharing and, and it's it's a it's it been a beautiful movement a beautiful thing I, I actually want to talk more about that maybe in another video or, or a blog post but one little thing that I'm I am seeing um, a little like kind of like dark underbelly of it not not of that movement really but um, of like dark corners of the internet I'd say so you see this a lot on reddit and there are a few Facebook groups where you're starting to see this too but it's like the aggrieved Asian male particularly it's like Asian men um, and, but I think that's only half the story. So you, you get these, and I was gonna label it something like, I think I was thinking something funny like Pam, like pissy Asian man. You get these, you get these guys that, have, that feel like, um, that have a lot of trauma, that have a lot of like real hate and anger towards 
society for feel, they feel wronged they feel that asian men are like you know looked down upon and disrespected and you know not represented in the media and not represented in the boardroom and you know just like just are like you know you, you re legitimately the extent of victim victimization these guys feel um it's it's not even like a over like a, a dejected victimization it's like a piss like Meh. And um, and I've landed on a few comment threads in, in like Facebook and on Reddit. There's some subreddits that are that have this kind of like um, toxic to toxic kind. Of, I would say toxic kind of mindset. And these these guys genuinely feel like anger is the due response, and um, and so they're on one end of the spectrum. Um, and but then I realized so I was, I, I was gonna cover something about that, um, but then I, I realized that there, that's only part of the story or half the story. And I was talking about this phenomenon, this pissy Asian male phenomenon, because uh, I, I can't relate to it. Like I, I you know, I, I guess I can understand and empathize where they're coming from. Like there are some unique challenges of being an Asian man in the West, but really it's, in my, in my experience, it's not that fucking bad at all. Like there's way harder challenges to deal with in life. On the spectrum of human suffering, Asian men in the West by and large don't have it that bad. There's billions of people who would be happy to trade place with us. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, so I was talking about this with a friend, and on the other end of the spectrum, there's, um, there's, uh, I was talking to my friend Stephen, and Stephen was saying something along the line. Uh, Steve, Stephen and I couldn't relate to it, and Stephen was like, he actually thinks it's like the one of the best positions to be in, um, and you know, uh, I'd love to hear him talk more about that. You know, I think there's like. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say it's the best, but I don't really, I don't, I don't really think about the best. It's the way I think about it is like, you know, like, uh, you know, I'm I'm five six. I'm not the tallest person in any room that I walk into generally. Um, and every once in a while, I might the thought might cross my mind. Well, I wish I was five eleven, or I wish I was six feet tall. That's my dad. And uh, but when I catch myself thinking that, I think, well, it could be worse. There's people that are shorter than five six, and sorry if you're shorter than five six, but but um. And uh, you know, all in all, like that's not stopping me from achieving you know the, the real meaningful things in my life that I want to achieve, whether it's um, relationships or building a business or ha starting a family or getting a corgi. You know, like the important things in my life, the most important things in my life. There's being five six does not stop me from achieving it. Being Asian does not stop me from achieving it. So I, I'm on you know the way lighter end of the scale of human egregiences, uh, grievances. Um, and so the Asian aggrievance spectrum is a real thing. I think there, you can find it in certain communities of particularly Asian men who feel really vitriolic and anger and hatred towards everybody. And, uh, and I think a, being Asian is a convenient excuse that they can point to to externalize their, the outcomes in their life and to not take responsibility for the outcomes that are happening in their life and to just you know, push off blame and not take responsibility um, on something that's outside of their control. I mean, really, like, what good does it do? Are you going to change society with your anger, or are you going to change your mindset and and accomplish everything that a a well-adjusted person could really seek to accomplish in life? And I think if you take that that ownership and that control and that responsibility, um, then uh, then I think you you will live a better life in society and. and Asian men and Asian people in all over the world will be better off. Everybody all around the world will be better off for you taking that positive mindset, operate from a place of gratitude. So that is my thoughts on the Asian aggrievance spectrum from Pam to, I don't know, gratitude. From Pam to Ham, shout out to Sibo, happy Asian male. Uh, where do you fall on that spectrum and why? Very interesting question. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye.